Hello, a very warm welcome to Fireside Chats. I am Magla Pillay and today we will be taking up the subject of the will factor. Um, everyone has a will, whether you realize it or not. And our speaker today, Sister Denise, an experienced practitioner of Raj Yoga Meditation, will be taking us through this subject to help us understand um, what will is and how we can apply this knowledge to our daily lives. In this series, we look at a variety of subjects surrounding spirituality and, more importantly, how one can deepen one's relationship with God. Sister Denise, a very warm welcome to today's show. Thank you. The will factor. Um, what does that mean? It's a very interesting way of phrasing the title. Will. You can also talk about will power. What is exactly the will? to apply your will to something. People speak about, you know, there has to be the political will to get some policy put into effect. It is a force uh, that uh, you um, bring to bear on circumstances to make them happen. The will, it's to do with your power. And so, yeah, it's a very important thing to talk about. Is it, Denise, a free will? Does it also fit into this picture? Free will is interesting. I think people are a lot less free than they think. Okay, that's cryptic. Say more. Uh, we speak about free will. Um, people believe uh, in uh, freedom. And so when you talk about freedom, you also talk about free will. I choose to do this, therefore I'm doing it. But there are other very hidden factors which interfere with that freedom. And this is why I say you're not as free as you think, because there are factors like your karmic accounts. There are factors like uh, what is the strength of your will in comparison with the strength of the obstacles that you are encountering or are going to encounter and maybe your will is uh, not strong enough in which case it's going to limit your freedom. Sister Denise, when should a human being learn to exercise their will? And um, one can exercise will in various contexts, can't you? You can exercise it re as regarding your body, regarding your mind, regarding your career, regarding your choice of partner, um, your choice of um, how you see God and how you communicate with God. Um, how does one go about um, exercising one's will in all of these various departments? Um, especially if... Um, if you're born into uh, uh, life circumstances where um, you don't even know you have such a choice? Well, I think there's a difference between choice and will. Oh, you do? Yes. Okay, tell us what that is. Uh, because um, there are many who use those two terms interchangeably. Right. Okay. To me, a will is a, is a force. And you say, okay, I will do this. And somebody else comes along and says, no, you will not, you know. Mm. And so it's not really a choice. It's a matter of whose will is stronger. Mm -hmm. So I, I look at will in terms of personal strength. And uh, choice is that there are choices. And uh, some people, they don't realize that they have the choice. And uh, then in that case, they need the education to know you do have the choice, you have to make the choice, you have to apply your will to the process of making a choice. So I still feel there's a difference between making a choice and applying your will. Uh, the other area where you hear about will is in addiction. Uh, where in, Sorry, in? Addic addiction. Addiction, okay, yes. Mm. Because sorry, can I interrupt you there, Sister Denise? Any type of addiction. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Proceed. Any kind of addiction uh, is described as a disease of the will, because 
you you decide to not pursue that addiction but it is stronger than you so you are unable so that means that your will is weak and you hear sometimes about people being weak-willed where they ought to do something by applying their will and they just don't because their will is too weak and that's a little bit um, connected with this whole question of an addiction uh, connected with a diseased will. If you have somebody who's strong-willed, they decide this is what I'm going to do and they will just push through any number of obstacles that may be in the way. So there would be the sign of a strong will. I choose to do this and um, you do not brook any opposition, you see. In terms of spiritual practice, it's very good to um, develop the will because you need to apply your will, uh, which is connected with the determination that this is what I'm going to accomplish. And there may be resistances, there may be obstacles, oppositions to prevent you. But if your will is strong, then you will actually get through all of those things. So I think that, okay, you make a choice, but to actually fulfill your choice, there's this whole other energy of will that you apply to it. Mm. Okay. Now, Sister Denise, um, one can't wake up one fine day and decide, um, I will now exert my will with, uh, with full gusto. Um, there are a lot of virtues and qualities uh, that stand behind um, somebody who has a weak will and conversely somebody who has a strong will. Isn't that so? Yes. Okay. So how, um, how do you establish where you are at? in the first place and um, uh, if you realize and it's a difficult thing to come to terms with that you are weak willed uh, how do you develop it so that uh, you're a person of strong will how do you make the transition first of all i think that you can wake up one morning and say okay i think i'm gonna have to exert my will on this situation. Okay, which means that you realize that thus far um, you haven't been as strong as you would have liked to have been. Um, maybe that, or maybe you just didn't get it that it's a matter of applying your will. Maybe you thought, you know, things will just happen by themselves, and they don't. You need to apply your will. That means you have to you know, go inside and collect your strength. You know, there is something called coming into your power. Yes. And I think that's connected with um, your will. Uh, because once you have found your power and uh, aligned yourself, then you claim your power, you apply your will. This is what I'm going to do. It's also connected with being very clear. So, yeah, several things uh, come together there. When you're doing the right thing and when you're following your conscience, by right thing I mean you're doing actions which are um, having positive consequences for you. You are actually accumulating a certain power and that power can I think, be called willpower. Because as you accumulate it, you start following your conscience, doing the right thing. Gradually, something is happening, and one fine day, it's as if you're able to grab a hold of it and really start to live your life the way you want to, rather than being sort of at the mercy of circumstances and the goodwill of people and things like that. So it is almost as if it's one day to the next mm -hmm. because perhaps there's a uh, critical mass or a critical moment where you just make that shift from weak to strong. Okay. Okay. And Sister Denise, the, the virtues behind uh, 
somebody with a strong will, uh, what will their, their makeup be like, their personality makeup? Uh, they'll have a lot of faith in themselves. Mm, and that's they'll a have beautiful quality to yes. be able to have faith in yourself. I think also they'll be very clear about what, they're, what they want to do and they will have a lot of faith that their um, discernment is right and they go for it, you know, all these things line up. The person will not have self-doubt, they will not vacillate, they will not uh, ask people, is this right, is that right, you know, they will be so with themselves that they'll go for it. And, I mean, it can be a um, negative quality. You do hear people say, oh, this is a very willful person. That means they insist on doing the wrong thing, and they do. So if your uh, willpower is lined up with a good power of discernment and a clear uh, view, of what's in front of you and your your conscience and everything that's really good but um, you know a lot of people uh, go off in the idea of being convinced that they're right there's not um, anything other than an ego problem and mm -hmm. so if you have a strong will and a big ego problem that's a problem for everybody else um. I'm glad you mentioned that because my next question is, is it ever okay to exert your will on another human being? Um, and by that I mean a um, person's A's life is going this way and you think uh -uh, it should go this way. Is it ever okay to do that? Well, I mean you have to look at it case by case, but I think that, um, you know, if a person's life is going in totally the wrong direction, um, you using your will to make them go in another direction is probably not going to be strong enough. And uh. by the way, it's also not your business. <laughs> <laughs> by the way, yeah, uh, except that um, we one of our favorite pastimes is to stick our nose in other people's business, is it no. not? That's not a good thing to do. No. That is not the dignity of a high quality person. Yeah, that's powerful. <laughs> yes. Um, you know, Sister Denise, the reason I asked you this question is because if it's a loved one, um, whether that person is 20 or, I don't know, 70, we think, um, uh, you know, I want to do what's best for my sister, my father, my grandfather, and so I will decide this, that they should do this because, well, I just think I'm right and they're wrong. The thing is this, you can suggest, there's this expression, you can, you know, take a horse to water but you can't make him drink, and I think that, uh, yeah, you can say, okay, this is what I think is a good idea, but then it's up to the person. Mm. Uh, you stated earlier that one can wake up one fine day and decide that I need to exert my will in a stronger fashion because I'm not happy with the way I exerted my will in the past. Okay. Um, what, explain to me on a practical level, not thought but in reality level, um, what does it take to um, not just uh, think it but put it into effect in, in your life? Uh, in certain cases, the exertion of one's will requires some behavioral change. Well, yes. Is it a question, Sister Denise, of sitting down and thinking it, you know, from beginning to end, or just um, say, uh, I've decided now I'm leaving home, I'm walking out of here, but and, and I'll see where I'll go. How far should you go in your decision-making process? Well, it's very individual, very much case by case, but, um, you know, you have to analyze your situation and see, you know, what we call the the past, present and future. Have a look at the trend of things, you know, and is it going where you want to go? And if you don't do anything about it, it's going to go over here, 
so then it's your responsibility. So, you know, taking this into your hands and saying, I choose not to go there, you have to use what we call in Brahma Kumari's firm, determined thought. Mm. Um, on a previous episode, you mentioned the eight powers that one acquires in the practice of Raj Yoga meditation. Which one of those eight powers or more would you use in this, um, in the exercise and the increase of your will? Well, I think a very impor important one would be the power to face. Mm. Would it be, Sister Denise, facing yourself or would it be facing um, another person that you're referring to? It depends on the situation. You may have to face the fact that uh, another person is um, exercising uh, their will to prevent you from going where you have to go. So your will has to be stronger than their will. And um, you have to take that decision, make that decision, you mm -hmm. see. Because, I mean, there are conflicts that occur in this world and somebody says it's got to go this way, somebody else wants it to go the other way. It's a um, clash of will, mm. but it's also sometimes a clash of ego, you see. So you need to discern very well what's going on and for yourself you need to face what's happening. It could be that you are going out of line and you have to face that. It could be that someone else is, um, you know, forcing you to do something against your will and um, if you don't gather together your will and do something that's more forceful the other way, uh, you're going to be in big trouble. So, I mean, these things involve really getting clear about who you are and where you are and then making a strategy and then going there. And mm. so this thing of firm determination is very powerful. And uh, you have to be very clear, getting yourself ready to, you know, move. It's like moving a, a huge bulldozer. Nothing will get in its way. It's very strong. So you have to be sure what you're going to apply this to and you don't have to do it very often in your life, but when it's an important moment, yes. Mm. Yes, Denise, um, when one has to face the fact or come to terms with the fact that you have either a weak will or a strong will, um, the one thing that you would also have to face is uh, your own weaknesses that also come into play. Um, you know, no human being has just one strength and conversely, no human being has just one weakness. There's an entire um, um, bunch of both weaknesses and strengths that we have. So, um, how does one, um, in the cauldron of <laughs> weaknesses, uh, decide, I need to exert my will, um, but what do you do with other aspects of your dark side? Because um, uh, one weakness leads to another weakness. If you, okay, um, I want to you say it in, in this context. Um, the reason one could not have exercised one's will in the past is because of fear. Fear, well, is, a, fear is a huge issue for a number of people as far as the exertion of their will is concerned. Well, the thing is this, if you're afraid and the consequences of your fear is this, and if you gather together your strength and face your fear, then that consequence is shifted and you go in a different direction. So, I mean, it's up to you. You want to save yourself or not? You know, sometimes you have to face your fear. Um, do you want to save yourself or not? Is that the criteria one uses? <laughs> well, you know, I'll tell you something. Every so often in my life I've been in situations where it's either me or you who's going to survive. And I've always found 
that I choose myself. And, um, and I think that I'm quite comfortable with that, you know, because there are times where, you know, it's kind of <laughs> almost like a Russian roulette situation. And um, I, I think to come down on the side of the self is a good thing because ultimately you're an eternally mortal soul and if you don't root for yourself you're done for and so if you discover that when push comes to shove I take care of me I think that's a sign of a strong will okay now sister Denise um, God um, is um, inviting God into one's life a sign of uh, strong will? I think inviting God into one's life is a sign that you are ready to put aside your ego. Mm. Um, let's talk more about that. Um, to what extent does one's ego um, limit you? as far as your um, freedom to think and act is concerned? Well, are you, are you f can you ever be free as long as you have ego? I think that very often the ego will masquerade as the will. Oh, um, an example of that is, I want this, In I way, want yes. that, yes, and, but yes. it's the false I. Yes, it is. Okay, so and so then when the ego is masquerading as the will, to me that's a sign of the weak will. You see, how do you know, Sister Denise, that uh, when you say um, I I want to go in this direction in my life, I want to choose this person to spend the rest of my life with, I want to move to this country. How do you know um, that it's free will and not ego? because uh, you've got to be very, very discerning to know the difference. And, and, and it, it doesn't necessarily come in the form of a thought process. It can come in the form of a feeling. This feels right. It could be 100% wrong, but it could feel right because of ego. What we learn in uh, Raj Yoga is you may have an inspiration and it feels good, this feels right, okay, we'll call that an inspiration. That inspiration has to be validated, backed up. You have to um, maybe consult uh, someone who is um, someone you respect, uh, someone who may know about that particular uh, situation. Um, sometimes a person will not, m I mean, very often, usually, nobody will make a decision for you, but they may say, well, have you thought of this and have you thought of that? So I think that, you know, inspirations are great, but then you have to make sure that they are backed up by sort of common sense and realism and that you've really checked out all the various other considerations to confirm that it's not just a nice idea. You know. mm -hmm. Because sure. if it is just a nice idea, then you can say, well, that's, that's the ego masquerading as the will. Okay, um, you mentioned God and I interrupted you. Uh, we, we digressed into the subject of ego. Coming back to God and free will. Um, well, there's free will in so far as you will exercise your will, but then there's also destiny. And uh, God will be uh, kind of watching to see how well you are able to discern is the way open for you or not? Um, because there are moments where you literally have free choice. Uh, but there are not many moments. And you have to, when, you, when you're in front of a moment of free choice, you have to really think. Uh, because your free choice can put you into a trap. Or, or your free choice can keep you along a road which is taking you really to where you want to go. 
So this is where I think that, you know, to consult with God, to consult with a wise person can be helpful to maybe modulate that uh, unrestricted freedom that you feel at that particular moment where it is there because that that window can open wide and you can think it'll always be open wide but it slams shut right away and then whatever choice you have made you can't go back so your your choices need to be uh, modulated with wisdom hmm. okay that's a lovely note on which to end thank you so, our choices need to be modulated with wisdom. That sounds like a, a bumper sticker that one could put at the back of one's car. So, um, I don't recommend you go that far. But what I do recommend is that you take some time and reflect on what Sister Denise has shared today because there's uh, four decades of spiritual practice behind it. Um, free will is not necessarily something that we consider and think about all the time, but um, practically every juncture in our lives requires the making of a decision. And if you're weak, uh, your decisions will um, not be in your favor. They may possibly harm you. And if you're strong, then uh, the exertion of free will will uh, work in your favor. So a very powerful message from Sister Denise, and I hope this has been of some benefit to you and your life. Thank you for joining us, and I hope to see you soon. Goodbye. <laughs>